Nobody else will remember your accomplishments. You have to be your biggest advocate. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast, a free resource for women who work in the sports and entertainment industry. Each week we get real and talk about the things that hold us back and how we can overcome them and keep climbing to the top. And the top is however you define it. We talk about the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Consider this podcast your secret weapon. You will learn from the best in the business and be able to take immediate action with all the advice that you hear. I'm your host, Jahan Blake, a leadership development coach and consultant. I've worked in sports for 20 years. 15 of those years were spent working for the Red Sox, Dodgers, and the Cubs. After 15 years of working in the front office, I took a leap of faith and I started my own business. Friends, as a Black woman in sports, I know that the industry can take a toll on your confidence and sometimes leave you feeling defeated. Join me each week so I can support you on your journey. I promise you, each week you will feel stronger and more confident than the week before. So let's get started with this week's episode. Hi friends, it is the start of a new month and I want to help you with some quick I'm talking quick and easy tips to make sure you achieve your goals. It starts with one thing, accountability. This is something that is in your control, how you hold yourself accountable. It takes discipline, it takes focus, and at times you're going to have to dig deep and push yourself. But don't forget, this is where the growth happens. I promise you, it is worth it. So do you have what it takes to hold yourself accountable in 2023? I have two tactics that I want you to implement, two tactics to share with you that will 100% help you hold yourself accountable in 2023. All right, Game of Thrones listeners, let's do this. Now, before we jump into these two easy tactics, I want to level set. You need to have goals, right? You need to have annual goals. I recommend if you don't have any to develop three to four and make sure you share them with your manager. Make sure you guys are aligned. Make sure they are measurable. Ask yourself, what does success look like if I achieve this goal? How am I going to measure it? How am I going to show my manager I nailed this? It can't just be a simple anecdote. They have to have metrics. It has to be measurable. Make sure they are realistic. I know as ambitious women, we can set extremely ambitious goals, especially if this is your first time writing goals. Maybe you came from a background where you didn't. Maybe this is your first job. Maybe you just kind of, you never set goals with your organization. Whatever the reason is, sometimes when we are first setting goals, we can set these big ambitious, these would take a miracle to achieve, but I can do it. And I'm going to show my organization how great I am. And it drives you all year long. But the thing is, is sometimes it does take a miracle and that miracle may not happen. So you want to make sure your goals are realistic. Now, I'm not saying just set easy goals so you can achieve them. Although someone did give me that advice one year. I wish you could see the face I'm making. I'm just saying make them realistic. And what will drive you or what can drive you all year is not just meeting your goals, but exceeding them. See the difference? Now, when you check in with your manager to see what they think of your goals, this is a great time to make sure the work you are prioritizing fits in with the bigger picture of the organization. Imagine putting in all this hard work and energy into your deliverables only to realize they are nice to have, but they don't really push the organization forward into achieving their big picture goals or your organization's big picture goals. Friend, that would be a waste of time. And it would also be a waste of your organization's time and resources. Mm -mm, Don't let that happen. Make sure your great work is making a great impact. Okay, first tip. Ready? Here we go. Conduct a monthly self-assessment. This is something that will take you 15 to 30 minutes once a month. All you have to do is ask yourself two questions. So you have goal number one, what's working well? What areas need improvement? When you do that, you will be able to assess where you are wasting valuable time. We don't have a lot of it. And you'll be able to assess how much progress you've made in the month. Now, when you are able to identify where you're wasting valuable time, you can immediately course correct. Imagine wasting time all year long and just not realizing it because you're moving so quickly. Gosh, the year goes by so fast, especially in sports. So there is so much value in hitting pause and evaluating what you've been doing for the month. It allows you to cut out the things that are a waste of time and no longer serve you or your goals or your organization. 
you also get to look at how much progress you've made in a month. Now, this will leave you feeling either disappointed or happy with your performance. Either way, it will give you motivation. Because if you are disappointed with your progress, you are definitely going to want to figure out a way to change that for the next month, right? Don't let it get you down. If that's something you you suffer from and just, I don't know, self-doubt and this fuels your self-doubt and you feel stuck, make sure you download my um, free resource. I'll link to it in the show notes, uh, Manage Your Mindset, and that will help you get unstuck in there, right? So I I know sometimes self-doubt, and if you're disappointing yourself, it just can be a a horrible intersection, right? Where you just kind of get stuck. So don't get stuck there. Scroll into the show notes and you'll see the link to download this free workbook. It's something that my clients use all the time and love because it helps them get out of their own head. So you're either going to use this as a way to be motivated because you're disappointed or you're going to be really happy with your performance. And that's also going to motivate you. Either way, you're going to feel motivated to either stop and figure out a new way to do things because you don't want to be stuck or you're going to be like, I'm killing it. I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to keep doing it the way I'm doing things. Either way, it's a win for you to understand how you have been doing for the past month. Tip number two, align with your manager and big picture goals. Now, let me pause before I go into that and talk about meeting with your manager. You should be meeting with your manager weekly. Each time you meet with your manager, you want to talk about three things, what you're working on and one win. This reminds them what a badass you are. And it also gives them language to talk about you when you're not in the room. The second thing is you want to talk about what's on deck. And then the third thing is where you might be stuck and what solution you're using to get unstuck or what you've tried and you can't seem to just get over this one hurdle and ask them for their help. This is important because if you don't, your boss won't know how to advocate for you when you're not in the room. If you don't, your boss won't understand the value that you're consistently delivering to the organization, to your department. And if you don't, your boss won't understand how much work you actually put in day in and day out. So it's important to have your weekly touch base with your manager and make sure you're sharing with them what you're doing well, what's on deck that helps prioritizing, and then two, where you might be stuck. Those three things are going to help you. Okay, now that we've level set on that, once a month, on top of your weekly, once a month, you want to just do a quick touch base on your goals. You've already done the self-assessment, right? That was tip number one. So now it's time to give your manager a summary of this self-assessment. This quick touch base allows your manager to weigh in on what they've been seeing as well in the month. A good manager is going to coach you on areas where you need improvement and reward or applaud you on areas that you were doing well. This will help you stay on the right track all year and help ensure that you are growing in your role. And if you're seeking a promotion or a raise, although I feel like we always are working towards that, but if you are really specifically saying that at the end of the year or within six months, I want to ask for this promotion or raise because I know I deserve it, this helps you stay in lockstep with your manager and will make it easier for when you ask for that raise. Okay, that's it, you guys. Two steps, two easy steps. If revisiting our goals is so easy, why don't we always do it? Here's the deal. It's quite simple and there is no judgment here. We don't always make it a priority. We have a thousand things going on and it's the first thing to get pushed when we're short on time. Here's a few things that I work with my clients on. Now I get to be their accountability partner, if you will, but I make sure they put time on their calendar. So block off your calendar so nobody else can interrupt you. And if you're the type of person that presses like snooze on it and says, I'll come back to it, put another one that says, hey, insert name here, do this now. This is your second reminder. Now, if you're in a cubicle and you can't close an office door and lock it, put some headphones on, even if there's no music. Pretend you're on a Zoom call or perhaps reserve a conference room. You have to get creative and protect your time and protect your career growth. You know, you can also do it at home because nobody's gonna pop into your at-home office. Well, maybe your roommate might or your partner might, but you can tell them to leave you alone. This is your precious time and you don't have time to waste. Okay, the second thing that I always recommend and that my clients find joy in doing when they make the time is tracking your wins. Nobody else will remember your accomplishments. 
You have to be your biggest advocate. And you're not going to remember all the great things that you do every single week. At the end of the week, you're going to go, the weekend happens, you start over again on Monday and like you kind of forget what happened within the week, right? You keep on moving and next thing you know, it's like six months from now, like what? I think I did, I had to do some great things, right? If you write them down, you will have them at your fingertips. If you don't track your wins, and this takes five to 10 minutes every week, if you don't start tracking your wins, nobody else will remember your accomplishments, You will continue to be frustrated and stuck when you're trying to recall the specifics of success that you had in the past. You will get passed over for opportunities because you can't articulate why you are the right fit. Like I said, it is hard to remember all the amazing things that you accomplish over the course of a year. One thing you do after this episode is just get a notebook. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy planner. I mean, I do love a good planner, but you don't have to go out and do that. You can Put it in an Excel spreadsheet in your calendar. You can use your notebook in your phone, whatever phone you have. Set some time on your calendar to do it every single week. Keep it simple. Okay, so every week in your calendar, you should see tracking. Every month, you should have time set aside to review your annual goals. All right, my friends. So I hope you take some time, if you haven't already, to revisit your goals, to see what great things you're doing and where you can make some adjustments so that you finish 2023. I know it's February and we're talking about finishing the year, but you can finish the year strong. You can make sure that you set yourself up for success over the next now 11 months that we have left. All right, my friends, until next week.